our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Big John, look at those numbers. You look at those numbers and what it, it says one word, Goldie, experience. Both guys are outstanding fighters with a ton of experience. A ton of experience, a ton of talent, and a ton of desire to leave as the middleweight champion. Here is Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA Live on CBS Sports Network from Mohegan Sun Arena. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds to the vacant Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment Tom Cantone, Chief of the Mohegan Tribe, Lynn Malerva, and supervising at Cage Side Director Mike Mazzulli. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner. At six foot one, weighing in 184.9 pounds, in a quest to hold two world titles, the reigning Bellator welterweight champion enters tonight with 32 professional victories, seven losses. From Goiania, Goiás, Brazil, he fights out of Atlanta, Georgia, Douglas, the Phenom Lima. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 184.9 pounds, having accumulated multiple titles in a marquee career. Tonight, in an attempt to regain the Bellator title, he enters with 46 professional victories, seven defeats, two draws. By way of Liederdorf, he fights out of Amsterdam, Netherlands, introducing Gekard Musasi. In charge of the action, your referee, Dan Mergliato. All right, gentlemen, fit the rules of the locker room. Once to be on my commands at all time, we to take yourselves at all time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Back to your corners, good luck. <coughs> The Bellator middleweight belt will go to the victor. Gay Guard Musasi, Douglas Lima. Fight schedule right, for ready, five. Ready, five go. minute round. Let's go, gentlemen. Fight. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico Musasi in the red gloves, Lima in the blue gloves. Lima told us he is at That's about the done. same weight as he enters the Bellator cage when he fights at welterweight, around 200 pounds. He did a lot of power lifting. He thinks his kicks will be more lethal at 185. Very interesting to see that Gegard is crushing that space, Josh. He's bringing it more into a boxing range than a kickboxing range to limit that kick right there. One of the best fight IQs in the game is Gegard Mousasi. Yep. Got his hands locked. This is a good time for him to be able to get a takedown. Can he do it with Lima? Because he is tough to get down. Douglas Lima earned his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from his longtime coach, Juan Carnero, who is in his corner tonight back in 2014. You know, Goldie, sometimes when guys of this magnitude are fighting, you just gotta. <laughs> this is. I'm just like. I'm just glued to my. I just can't get my hands off this thing. Oh, nice job of taking the back. Let's we'll see if Douglas can. Yeah. Gegard at a nice position. Gets him down. He's got that head high, which can hold Douglas Lima in this position right now. Oh, he's got the double wrist control there. He's gonna start trying to stand up now and maybe start to get his left leg free. He's got to be very careful, lifting his chin up to listen to his corner. He is real sneaky at getting that arm right underneath that. Musasi's last win by submission was back in 2014. A rear naked choke on Mark Munoz. Mark Munoz unable to counter that. It has been a long time since Lima has been stopped. A dozen years. You don't want to settle in this position if you're Douglas Lima. You can see that Musasi's got Douglas Lima's left wrist. 
Finally got it free. Colorado State, Fresno State, coming up right here on CBS Sports Network after our main event. Douglas is doing a, a nice job of remaining calm and patient in this, but he's got to get to a point where he decides, all right, I'm getting up. Here it comes. Oh, our double champion, Patricio Pitbo. Of course, a proud Brazilian. Thinks a Brazilian is going to walk away with another piece of Bellator gold. He certainly hopes so. This is not where you want to be with Gegard Mousasi. We've seen him with the top guys, uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. When he got on top, this is where all the damage was done against him as well in their title fight. One of the things that Gegard is outstanding, watch his hip position when he's in the top here. You'll see him forcing his hips forward, super heavy, and gets position where he can bring a lot of power on his shots. In that fight with Rafael Lovato Jr., he did all of his work, I believe it was at the end of the third round. Rafael Lovato Jr. stood up after that, a bloody mess after that round. This is not where you want to be in it. This is also too at the beginning of the end for Rory McDonald when the fight got to the ground. A little bit of a head clash there. Gegard came down, got warned by Dan Mergulata by watching his head. A shout out to the former champion, Rafael Lovato Jr. Unfortunately for medical reasons, he had to cut his career way too short. But a class act in an unbelievable mixed martial art. Just an unbelievable Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. Came into MMA undefeated throughout his career. He was remarkable. But John, we've seen this in the past with, with Douglas Lima. He likes to hang on to the guard position, and this is what cost him the fight against Roy McDonald. Also, he fought Korshkov in, the, in their third fight. He had hung out in the guard a couple times after not stopping the takedown when he should have been trying to get back to his feet. Now, that, that was actually when he lost the title to both. You're talking about it. Korshkov in the first fight he had with Korshkov. Had a bad knee and ended up where he was utilizing the guard and crossing his legs and holding the fighter in his position. He cannot do that. He talked about, John, how he took a beating in that fight against Korshkov back in 2015. Break! Watch, watch what happens here, Josh. You'll see Gegard brings his head down. Almost to clash. It really doesn't hit Lima in the head, but you cannot use your head in any fashion as a striking instrument. It doesn't matter if it's head to head, head to chest. You cannot do that. That's illegal. John, are you sure you know the rules? No. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote them, but at this point, at his age, he forgot most of it. Yeah. <laughs> Round two. Round one to Musasi, I would imagine to John. I think so. I'm yeah. just saying. There's that very first kick right there. Uh, Gegard was able to actually just wiggle his foot right out of the way. Well, Gegard checks kicks, and he doesn't get kicked a lot overall by anybody, so Lima said, I might go high a few times. Keep a look out for that possibility. I, th I personally think you know, one of the things I brought out in my keys to victory, Douglas Lima needs to keep his back off of the cage, and he is making a huge mistake by putting himself in this position. That black ring that you see, that's what he should be inside of. Lopsided numbers in the first five minutes, to say the least. But what, what you'll see from Gegard is just the complete relaxation. This is the way he fights, and this is why I think he doesn't get the credit he deserves. He waits for his opponent to make a mistake, and at the same time, he looks so relaxed and calm as he waits for them to make a mistake, and then he destroys them. He's lethal. In a shorter version, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 46 <laughs> career wins. That was a nice leg kick by Douglas Lima, but it was a good counter by Gegard. Gegard did tell us that he plans on utilizing his wrestling in this matchup. Lima acknowledged that he knows that that is the case and worked a lot on 
on his defensive wrestling in this game. Tá começando a John, I know Boa. that Lima has Alguém always been considered a really big uh, uh, welterweight, but I gotta tell you, he looks equal to the same size. And I know that we were saying like 205, 203 is what Gegard's gonna come in and Lima will come in at 197, 199, somewhere in there. But, ooh, that was nice. They look very similar in size. They are very similar in size. If you look at their frames, I would say Gegard's maybe an inch taller, but you know, you're looking at the shoulder structure of Lima. He's wider. Guys, when we talked to him earlier in the week, he did say that his weight would pretty much be the same on fight night as it is when he fights at 170. What I look more for is when, when guys cut a lot of weight or girls cut a lot of weight, females cut a lot of weight, is that I want to see it to make sure they don't put more on trying to gain an advantage. They, whatever weight they train at is the weight that they should be fighting at. Because that extra pound, I was trying to give the analogy of if you've trained for a marathon and you normally are running, you know, you're, you're running your weight class is normally like 160 and I'm running 20 miles at 160, weighing 160 pounds. Well, I don't go and put on two more pounds and carry that for a marathon and that's kind of what they're doing in this fight. And if you run only 20 miles, you don't finish a marathon, by the way. Yeah, 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 that's why I don't run marathons, by the way. <laughs> it just makes more sense to take the car, don't you, Josh? <laughs> Lima has been successful in landing a couple of those lower leg kicks, but you've also seen that Musasi has been able to block several, check them, which is causing pain to Douglas Lima's leg. He's got those fingers, he's got those fingers locked. Lima is doing a great job separating the legs, which is actually pulling on the fingers of Gegard, so it's harder for him to get the takedown. Those check kicks, Lima acknowledged that he was ready to encounter that pain, if you will, in this fight against Musasi. Hurts both guys. One of the things that if you're looking at the, you know, the comparison, when Gegard Musasi he fought Roy McDonald and they met in the center and there was an exchange. It was immediate that you saw that Gegard looked at Roy like, you can't hurt me. He has not made that same determination with Douglas Lima. He has given a lot of feints. He's been very careful in what he's doing, so he's giving Lima a lot of respect. He's felt a little bit of that Lima power though too as well. I think he thought he'd be able to manhandle Lima around like he did Roy McDonald. It's not happening the same. I would like to see Lima be a little bit more active, like one or two more punches, not just one at a time pot shots. Set for the start of round number three. Big John, after two, your scorecard. Right now, after two, I've got Musasi up. Two rounds to none. It's not that Douglas Lima hasn't landed some shots. He's just not throwing enough. He needs to get busier. He needs to start throwing more combinations and landing more shots. Which is pretty much what Juan Carnero said while we were in break in the corner. Start fighting your fight. Yeah, because what happened, you saw a little bit of the same Lima when he fought Rory McDonald the first time. He was hesitant, he was Rory McDonald. And then he realized halfway through the fight that this guy, I can beat this guy. And so, but by then it was a little bit too late. Yep. And then we fought the second fight. He fought a smarter fight, but he also landed and did more, had more output and ended up beating Rory McDonald to win the tournament. Way more output, won every round. Won every round of that fight because he was dominant as far as he initiated. And he's not initiating in this fight. He needs to start throwing. He also might be a little, maybe get into his mind a little bit because he's landed some really clean leg shots and calf kicks in this fight so far. And you'll see, you haven't seen any wind scene or any stepping or switching up stance from Gegard. And he just threw that leg that he's been attacking up to his head. Right now, there's no effect shown with any of those leg kicks that have landed. That was probably the first effect right there that you've seen. 
Aí sim. Aí sim. Olha o diabo agora primeiro. Com a mão antes. Mão antes. Isso. Isso. Cara. Vamos desarmar ele. Douglas, talk to us about how he thinks Gegard may look for takedowns off his kicks. We'll see as the fight continues. Don't forget, when we are done, it's college football time here on CBS Sports Network. Ooh, I'm just right outside there. Just missed. Good, sir. Next, 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 it still is Gegard Mousasi controlling the center of the cage. Gegard has been the guy that has been dictating this fight. That's what you want to see from Douglas Lima. Again, right to the body, back to the head. That's the output that Douglas needs to maintain. But what you also have to understand is when fighters put weight on, and sure, maybe this is what he normally walks around at, but when fighters put weight on, they're not also used to fighting at a fight pace, carrying this amount of weight. So he may be a little concerned about getting tired in the championship rounds. Whoa, he, we talked about that before in his career. He said, you know, I'm done worrying about, worrying about getting tired. I'm just going to go. If I'm tired, that means my opponent's going to be tired. And that's exactly what he's got to do right now in this fight. You can see the difference here in the strikes per round. In round one, 41-3, 13 that's a huge difference in the amount of strikes being thrown, John. Well, a lot of those in the first rounds because when Gegard took him down, he landed a lot of shots from Lima's guard. They're getting a more even as they're in the stand-up. But again, it's always Gegard who's initiating for the most part. First fight in over a decade at 185 for the welterweight champion Douglas Lima. Musasi has one title at 85 and 205. He beat Mark Hunt at heavyweight. He did. He submitted Mark Hunt. Took Mark Hunt down. Used the ground game that he's so good with. Got the submission. Gegard has fought a who's who in the sport of MMA. And John, you were in there for that one in strike force against Babalu. Oh my God, he was he was so calm, so relaxed, and didn't even breathe hard throughout the fight. It wasn't that long, and Babalu was a great fighter, a great ground technician, and Gegard just showed how superior he was at that time. John, no matter what happens, and Golden, I'm talking to you also. I'm right here. You guys need to understand, this is very impressive. Even though he's not doing the output, Douglas is not giving the output that he should be giving to win this fight. But the fact is, is that Gegard is showing him the amount of respect that he deserves because he possesses that type of power he just saw right there. Throw. There's no doubt, Lima's got power, man. He has hurt too many people, knocked too many people out. He has proved that he can put you out with one shot. And I'm sure that Gegard felt that power and said, I gotta be careful, but, He's got to throw to land that knockout shot. Now, John, could the plan be conservation that leads to conquer? Absolutely it could. You know, so many times you, you look and guys have game plans and you think, you know, hey man, you know, you're taking a lot of shots, you're really not doing a whole lot and they're waiting and they're saying, I know what I'm doing, and then fourth round comes and they start turning it on. And that's what we could see right now because you could look at, look at Lima's diaphragm. Rounds, it's not even go. moving. He's not tired. Not at all. Championship rounds. The former Bellator middleweight champion in the red gloves, the reigning welterweight champion in the blue gloves. There's one of those high kicks that Douglas Lima told us to look out for. That was a nice kick. Landed cleanly to the side of Gegard's body. You just gotta see a little bit more output from Douglas Lima because he's, he's had success when he is thrown. But I think that's why he's a little hesitant. He understands Gegard is only looking for the takedown. Seventh straight five-round fight for Lima. 
four of the last five have gone to the fifth round. He submitted Korshkov three minutes into the fifth in the first fight of the welterweight World Grand Prix. That was a beautiful step behind by Sasi. Elevates Lima. Nice job by Lima. That position's real hard to hold when you're a little sweaty, especially when you got the sweat going. But even here, Lima's got to be busier. Knees to the body, knees to the calves. He's throwing a little hill strike from here to the calf and the thigh as well. He just got to stay busier because Gegar is winning the position, the head position here, and just keeping him pressed against the fence. Head position is everything right now. Gegar is using that head as a third arm. It's forcing Douglas's head off to the side. It makes him a little weaker, and it opens up Gegard's attacks. For those of you guys watching at home, this is exactly though how Gegard He'll normally press and push harder in fights, but this is the style. He looks very relaxed, composed. Nothing that his opponents does shocks him or impresses him. So I think this is a big reason why he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. But he's honestly, technically, one of the best in the game. That last kick did a little damage because you saw Gegard think about switching his stance for a half second, John. You're absolutely right, man. You can see, there he goes again. Switches back to Southpaw, which is telling you, I'm feeling that leg. So what Douglas Lima has been doing, it's starting to have that effect. Look at the lump yes. on Gegard's. That left leg has got damage. You can see it. He's still using it. But the same as we saw with Rory McDonald, Lima's kicks are fast and heavy. I mean, in the Roy McDonald fight, he had taken so much damage to the leg he pulled the meat right off the bone. Or the muscle off the bone. He will never be the same fighter in taking to any leg kicks. You're Douglas Lima. You know it's time to turn it up. He's looking to hit that same exact spot over and over. He is, and as Gegard comes forward, he, he should just, he's got to start opening up with his hand. Follow his hand with that kick, and it's going to land a lot more effectively. Just that step that you saw Gegard take with that leg, you saw a little buckle. And that's because he's having a hard time actually feeling the normal way when you take that step. It's feeling heavy, it's feeling swollen, it's hurt, it's having an effect on it. And you can see the hematoma on Gegard's leg. I'm sitting here, Keisha, they're right in front of us right now. It's enormous. Under 30 seconds on the clock here in round four. When he hides his kick behind the, the punches, the whole so point. much harder though. Exactly, that's the whole point. If he would throw his hands and then bring the kick, hide that kick behind the hands, he's going to be more effective. But John, he's done all that damage with not hiding his hands. Yeah. <laughs> I just kick you out of the hands. So you have a 3 1. I do. Score, score, you guys can touch gloves. All right, back it up a little bit. Back it up, back it up. Back Five up, back up. minutes remain. All right, final round. Let's go. Moussasi in the red, Lima in the blue. The winner is the Bellator middleweight world champion. Gegard Mousasi has gone the full 25 minutes three times. He's 0-3 in those fights. Oh, he, well, <laughs> he may not, that might not be the case if it goes the distance this time. Thus my point. 
They are hard. Man. Man, it, this is what, right now, this is what you wanted to see from Douglas from the start, though. He's being aggressive. He's trying to land with heavy shots. John, I truly believe it was just a confidence thing. Now he's in the fourth and the fifth round. It's a little, I feel like it's a little too late unless he gets the finish here. But I think he finally is feeling like, you know what? I'm fine. I, I belong here. I can do this. He's just got to go. 56th pro fight tonight for Musasi. He's been knocked out once. Submitted three times. That's it. Stop. Four times. The other two setbacks by the Notice that right now, Douglas Lima is finally back in Gegard up. He's still being careful as far as going too fast forward because he doesn't want to get stuck in a takedown attempt. He's just got to go, John. I can sit here and talk all day long. He's just got to go, man. When you throw, you have success. Throwing and being on fences, sometimes that's your best defense. You make your opponent stop their offensive progression and it gives you opportunities. And not all fighters can play as well as that is. And those three decisions were in five round fights. King Mo, Leota Machida at 185 in a non title fight, and the former champion Rafael Lovato Jr. I guarantee there's going to be a large bucket of ice going up to Gegard Musasi's room after this fight. That leg is not feeling good. Pats the midway point of the fifth and final round. All Douglas Lima has to do though, Goldie and John, is he's just got to pull the trigger more and setting up his kicks with his punches or setting up his punches with his kicks. Throw the kick, come back with, with some punches. He's got to mix it up and also go to the head as well with his kicks. When you've got a kick that's that heavy, it's, not, it's okay to go to the head. Those gloves will not protect your head as we saw earlier with the Bobby Volker fight. What I'm seeing right now is he has Gegard in a position where Gegard's balance is, has been compromised. His ability to move out of the way of shots, his ability to accept those shots is not the same. So now's your chance to open up and go. He cannot respond with counters in the same fashion. That's what he was afraid of, I think. And like I said, the fight IQ of Gegard Musasi has been shown right there. Douglas Lehman needs to be very careful he doesn't get stuck in a Von Flu here. Good job, he gets his hand off of the head, but now he needs to get himself off of the ground. That's no easy task, John. No, not, not with the guy that he's got on top of. That takedown occurred though, John, because he had to set up the kick with his strikes. So what he did was he waited for Gegard to come in and try to get him on the step, and he ended up closing too much distance. Gegard was able to capture the leg and take him down from that Right now you're seeing him is the guy that's throwing shots. Gegard has not done any type of striking on the ground so far. That's the first one he's thrown. Here's the computer. They go the distance. Gegard Musasi and Douglas Lima. This is first round. This is when Gegard got that takedown and did a lot of good work on the ground. He landed good elbows, good punches, even a couple head strikes to the chest that are illegal. But it was Douglas Lima trying to stay on his feet, landing those kicks to the outside of the calf and the inside of the other leg. He was very effective and started to change the fight in the fourth and fifth round. Then in the fifth round, this takedown right here by Gegard.
kind of took all the steam out of that fight and Lima's ability to do damage. Michael C. Williams will tell us who our new middleweight champion is. Ladies and gentlemen, this world title fight, we go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Jaron Bilal, scores it 48-47, while judges Doug Crosby, David Torelli, both see it the same, 49-46. All have it for the win by unanimous decision, the new and now two-time Bellator middleweight world champion, Gegard Musasi. Gegard Musasi, once again, the Bellator middleweight world champion. All it comes down to is fight IQ. He used all the tools in his toolbox, where Douglas Lima was just trying to use one and trying to pick and choose his shots, and it didn't work to his advantage tonight. Congratulations to Gegard. Gegard Musasi with a huge win. Bellator 250 has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. For Michael C. Williams, Jay Glazer, Jail Sun and Jen Brown, Josh Thompson, and Big John McCarthy, Mike Goldberg saying so long until we see you right back here inside the Bellator cage. Time now for college football. Colorado State at Fresno State. Here's Ben Holden and Ross Tucker. We remain here on our Bellator YouTube channel. Big John with the champion. Gegard, first thing I want to say is congratulations on being a two-time middleweight world champion here. That was an outstanding performance, a very tough performance, but you fought very smart, very calculated throughout that. First round, you got the big takedown and did some damage. Was that your plan throughout the fight? Well, first of all, I want to dedicate this fight to my country, who's in a war right now. I also want to dedicate this fight to my country, and uh, I hope there will be peace soon. And to my friend Abdullah, my best friend actually, my brother, who lost his dad and helped me for this training. Uh, this for you, brother. And uh, my coaches, my friends, who also couldn't come. Thank you. And uh, what was the question? I forgot. <laughs> We, we talk about the takedown, and it looked like in the first round you went yeah. after that takedown. You went after it a couple of times. You got it several times in the fight, but how tough was it to take Douglas Lima down? Well, uh, I didn't want to waste too much energy, so I, I felt like I was winning the round. He wasn't pushing really the pace. I was pushing him backward, so I was scoring the round, so I didn't feel like necessary to take him down. Of course, at the end, I thought, well, it's maybe good because his last round, he's behind. He will come. So take down to secure the round and uh, get the win. You were touching that leg after the fight. Yeah. How much damage did he do with that low leg kick? Well, last round, he hurt me a couple times. I had a poker face, but he really hurt me. Well, tough, tough. I think uh, Douglas Lima is in his prime. So, uh, and he looked big. He didn't look like a welterweight. So uh, I fought smart. I knew I had the technical advantage. I could mix it with the takedowns. So he's difficult to put away. I think any other guy, maybe I would have finished, but with him, I knew his game. He's experienced, he paces himself. So, yeah. <laughs> it was an outstanding performance overall. And the one thing that we saw is your fight IQ was keeping you calm and patient throughout the fight and making him fight to your pace, your distance, you were crushing that space. Was that part of the game plan? Yeah, I didn't uh, take any unnecessary risk because then you close. He's very wild with his hooks. One, one punch can finish it. So I was scoring with the jab. I knew I had the four rounds at least. And the last round I secured takedown. So I cruised to the victory, but you can never count out the guy. He's a, he's a phenomenal fighter. He is a phenomenal fighter, and so are you. Congratulations you, on your second now title hold of the Bellator Middleweight Championship. Can't wait to watch you fight Thank you, again. Brother. Thank you.